just ahead of Thomas Drance. Today's guests are brought to you by Langley Chrysler. Don't struggle to find a great deal on your used vehicles when Langley Chrysler has over 200 vehicles on the lot. Save up to 10500 on Ram at Langley Chrysler in-store or online at langleychrysler.com. And a hello to our title sponsor as well, uh, Able Auctions. Just before we get to Thomas Drance, uh, Delaney's OK Tire and Langley inbox from Ron in Nanaimo. Yep. Black Friday today, boys. Maybe get some new chairs. I think it's time. For uh, us to get some new chairs. Well, we the patio bet, looks got to go. Yeah, the patio looks got to go. I mean, come on. I mean, uh, someone's got to buck up here and get some <laughs> chairs. Someone's got to buck up. They they found these uh, in some back room in this studio. No, they found like, these at a barbecue at, at Woodstock in 1957. Like, I mean, what is this? Was Woodstock in 57? No. 69. 69. Yeah, 69. Yeah. Yeah, it was in 69. Canucks of Columbus tonight, uh, joining us now from Columbus, Ohio, from the athletic Thomas uh, Drance. How are you, sir? Oh, you got audio on Thomas here? No, no audio there. No audio? No We're audio? Good? Okay, there you go. No, there you We've go. We've got it. Oh, good. Well, I was going to tell you that I'm doing well, but mostly because I'm sitting very comfortably in an office chair. Ah. Oh, don't worry. You're, you're, shot, you're shot. ready to get in. Hey, hey Thomas, just before uh, we get to the meat of this interview, we want to run this clip of J.T. Miller uh, post game from the other night in Pittsburgh. I believe you were asking uh, th this question about buy-in from the players. Have a listen. I think when we get everybody to buy in, we're a really hard to play team to play against. Is everyone buying in right now? I don't. Um, you were the one asking that question there. What did you make of that? And and really, it was more of a visual than uh, something you had to hear. What did you make of it, Thomas? Well, I certainly think he was – that was question six or seven for me in sequence, right? <laughs> I, I think he was probably pretty frustrated with me. Uh, I also think he was probably pretty frustrated with losing. JT Miller doesn't like to lose. JT Miller – you know, and, and that's a good thing, by the way, right? I think yeah, the fact yeah. that JT Miller's – so frustrated right now is what you want considering this team's won only three of their last 14 games, right? Like if he was calmer in that situation, if he wasn't taking it so personally, I think then you'd be worried that he's may maybe not part of the solution. The fact that he's got that edge, the fact that he wants so much more from himself and from those around him and from this team, to me, that's a good look on him. Even if that moment was, I'm telling about the environment that this team is working through right now. If you had to guess, Thomas, I'm putting you on the spot here. Who do you think JT Miller feels isn't buying in? Well, I, you know, I'm hearing similar to Rick that the reports of a schism within the locker room or uh, issues between, uh, you know, Miller and, and Bo Horvat, for example, like, I don't think there's, anything to that to be totally honest with okay. you based on what I've gathered sniffing around um so you know uh, m what i'm hearing is thick as thick as thieves on a day-to-day -day basis is is the general word um you know in terms of who's like these guys know who's doing well and who's not these guys mm -hmm. can tell you can't you can't cheat or lie to an nhl player in terms of your work ethic right the nhl players they live off like their whole job is picking at everyone on the other roster and occasionally on players on their own rosters, weak points, right. To get any edge they can get, like they know. And I think no too. Uh, in terms of, you know, who JT Miller is mad at specifically, I, you know, I don't have a precise answer for you. And I don't know that his answer was telling about that precisely so much as it was telling about a general frustration and just this atmosphere of gloom that seems to be, you know, the dominant one around this club at the moment. Thomas, I think we talked five times yesterday. Anyways, million, ru <laughs> million rumors out there. It's very hard to understand what is true, what is false. I, we will say that. There's a, a ton of stuff. You and I heard some stuff yesterday morning. We also heard Claude Julian, uh, Julian's name yesterday. Where are these Claude Julian uh, rumors coming from, and do you think there is anything to it? that I'm frozen at the moment. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we okay. got you. We got you. Sorry, I was like, I'm not really making that face, am I? Uh, the 
Julian thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that came to me midway through practice yesterday. That's right. And That's for right. the second time in as many days, right on Wednesday, yeah. Yeah. I, I was running around calling everybody about a different name. Yeah. And then on Thursday, I'm calling every, running around calling everybody about Julian. Yeah. And, you know, that's a, another sort of line of sight into what it's like to cover or be around and certainly to work for this team right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, all the uncertainty that is around. Like, I see Travis Green on the ice running practice. I'm like, yep. surely they'd be letting him run practice. He's going to be fired today. And then I get calls from people who are bulletproof yep. in terms of their information to me saying, word is Claude Julian. Yeah. And as I sort of worked it last night, and and finally I called you for the fifth time on my way to Thanksgiving dinner at Aaron Portsline's house, <laughs> that, um, you know, that I didn't think it was true to the extent that at least it wasn't happening like before the game on Friday or imminently. And of course, today he was announced as, uh, you know, the head coach of Team Canada for the Spengler Cup. Um, You know, we'll see where this goes. I think... Claude Julian's been in the mix for Vancouver before, right? When he was, when he was first fired by Boston, they certainly were interested in, you know, considering that option before they ultimately decided to promote Travis Green from the Utica Comets. Um, You know, we know that there's a close relationship there with Jim Benning. I think you can read an awful lot into that in terms of which voices internally would be pushing for Claude Julian. And, and so that sort of leaves us with the question of, considering where this club is and considering the decisions that have led them to this place, right? Mm -hmm. Does this general manager have the autonomy to bring in a a relatively expensive big name bench boss at this juncture? And if the answer is no, then why is he still your GM? Right? I mean, those are the big questions that this whole kerfuffle poses because I do think there's something here. I don't think it's something imminent. But I do think there's real interest there and we'll sort of see where it goes. I I just think, again, the entire episode poses questions that aren't about Travis Green at all and certainly aren't really about Claude Julian, Mm -hmm. but are more about where this organization is at and what they're going to do next in terms of setting this right. And and it's weird because it doesn't feel like they know Mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel like their staffers know. And I do think that that whole vacuum, that atmosphere of what's next, what's coming, I actually think that's a huge red flag at this point, like for for this entire organization, like a much bigger red flag to me than the occasional disorganization or the defensive mistakes or the lack mm-hmm. of scoring or the performance of Elias Pettersson, like a much bigger red flag than anything we can list, the, the penalty kill about their on ice performance. <laughs> a much bigger red flag to me is the fact that this organization doesn't seem to know what they're going to do. That's it. And that to me is, um, you know, deeply nerve wracking. If from the perspective of anyone who hopes for better things ahead and to come for Vancouver hockey. What was the mood like? And you, you tweeted some information out uh, about this. What was the mood like at Canucks practice yesterday? Yeah. So I, I sort of get to practice and I thought it was a little slow moving uh, at the, at the out. And then um, there was a drill in which, Uh, I think JT Miller's line and maybe the top six forward lines, but Mm -hmm. certainly JT Miller's line were at the wrong side of the ice to begin the thing. There was some confusion about that. Um, There was a conversation, a lengthy conversation between Travis Green and Brock Besser to explain what was going on, not heated. And then JT Miller, uh, often impatient, sort of yelled from his end of the rink, uh, as I tweeted, uh, we don't know what we're doing um, in terms of the uh, practice mechanics or that drill Mm -hmm. mechanics. Now, about midway through practice, Elliot Pearson scored like an absolute highlight reel goal that got his teammates all hyped. And the second half of practice was played at a much, much higher pace, like a, a higher than usual pace. And as I've dug into it a little bit since then, I do think that it, like the Pedersen highlight changed the atmosphere around practice and got everyone going. Like, I don't think it was like that. I think that the first half was really focused on some teaching some you know work in terms of more specific defensive zone coverage items and and as a result it was slowed down so i think my perception from the first half of practice has evolved since i sort of explained what i'd seen what i saw yesterday um but you know certainly the confusion on the drill did happen and and one thing i noticed that that's not super uncommon like it's not it's not extraordinary by any means it's just 
taken on a bit of a life of its own because of the circumstances that the team is in. And that's sort of where we're at. Again, a, a relatively routine exchange. And, you know, it isn't an every practice occurrence, but, you know, once every five practice, there's a drill that needs to be re-explained yeah. or there's a, a group of players who are in the wrong spot. I mean, that happens. Like, you know, it does happen relatively commonly at an NHL practice. And I just think everything is magnified when your club is, you know, scuttling the way that the Canucks are. Yeah. Thomas, uh, just before I let you go, I can't tell you how happy uh, Canuck Nation is that Elias Pettersson scored a beautiful goal in practice. Donnie yeah. warmed the cockles of Donnie's heart. Donnie was well, happy. Let's up the uh, Allen Iverson, um, right? The <laughs> practice? Right. Yeah, practice. Right? Let's, let's cue that up. I, I wonder if we'll ever be able to think about practice without thinking about Allen Iverson. It's truly I, I don't. I don't. Rick, you wanted to, you no. wanted to say goodbye hey, Thomas, to Thomas. Do you know who I think of you? You know who I think of you, Thomas? Uh, post the Is picture. Is it going to be Get the, the – Oh, right there. Look oh, at this. Oh, Ben Kingsley. Yeah. One Sir of the ben greatest Kingsley. actors. Uh, one of the greatest Let's actors, go. Donnie, of all time. Look at that. Ben mm-hmm. Kingsley. I'm I'm just waiting for the day that you put up the Lay's chip spokesperson and oh, uh, and people yeah. really get that with you. We should be posting Mr. Clean, that picture of Mr. Clean. <laughs> we'll get we'll get to Mr. Clean. Yeah, we'll get to Mr. Clean. Hey, Anyways, have hey. a great uh, day well, today. Well, no, this is the oh. obvious way we go out with Thomas. Yeah. What? Thomas Drance, he's a sexy beast. Oh, he is a look oh. at him. He looks like Vin Why, Diesel. Thank you. you know, uh, the, rock, for- the Rock, yeah, The Rock, The Rock. Very good, very good. <laughs> we'll talk to you next week, Thomas. All right, boys.